Welcome to Alternative Dog Moms Podcast. I'm Kimberly Gautier, the creator of Keep the Tail Wagging. For the past nine years, I've been blogging about raw feeding, pet wellness, and life as a crazy dog mom. I've seen massive improvements in my dog's health since I started raising my dogs naturally, and I'm passionate about sharing my experience to help other pet parents. I'm Erin Scott. For the past nine years, I've been researching and learning everything I can about healing cancer, allergies, autoimmune, and mystery illnesses in both my dogs and myself, and I can't wait to share with you everything I've learned on this journey. As the Alternative Dog Moms, we're bringing you all the latest dog health news that we're following and sharing the tips, tricks, and resources we learn along the way. Now, let's get started. Hello, Kimberly. Hello, Erin. So, oh my goodness, you have a new family member. Adoption paperwork. Ah. (laughs) Yes, I foster failed. And um, our new member is chewing on something, but I'm going to let that go because it's (laughs) a toy. But she is um, Bella Esme. and, And now she's looking out the window and growling and barking. (laughs) <laughs> so she discovered her reflection a couple weeks ago and just really enjoys it at nighttime. She goes around <laughs> to different doors and windows to look at her reflection and growl and bark at it. But yeah, she's a sweet little girl. She's a husky German shepherd healer mix. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of other breeds in there. Um, they were they did a they actually did a wisdom panel test on one of the puppies in the litter. So okay. I'm going to actually do an embark test to find out exactly what she is. But looking at her, you can see the um, Husky and you can see the German Shepherd and you can see the Blue Healer. She has all the markings. But so far, she's just a sweet little puppy who just, she's walking around and I'm, I already took her out to go pee. So I'm hoping that she doesn't, oh, good. She went and got on her bed. Yes. <laughs> she's laying down. Yes. So Tell me again how like how this all came to be because like we had talked right before Thanksgiving and then all of a sudden like two days later like you have a puppy on <laughs> Facebook and I'm like oh my god I just talked to her. <laughs> well I went to uh, I, I'm on the board of directors of a rescue and so we have rescue events here and there and I usually put in my face to you know either help we you know sell t-shirts and hoodies and all kinds of different things that we sell at these events and since it was near my home. I wanted to pop in. So I popped in and I saw these puppies online and I was just like, oh yeah, those puppies are going to be there. I just didn't really give it much thought. Um, I went in and I saw the puppies. I was like, oh, they're cute. Um, there were three of them, siblings. There's a, The litter is bigger than that, but there were three of them at this event along with some other puppies from other litters. And I was so tired. I was like, it was because it was early and I was just exhausted. And I walked in and was just like, I'm not a morning person and I'm exhausted. And someone was like, go sit in the kennel with the puppies and, and, and relax. So I did. And she immediately came to me, crawled into my lap and just sat there with me. And Aww. I was just like, you're adorable. And she just wanted to hang out with me. And um, so I started playing around with her. And and our one of our directors asked, she's like, do you want to foster her? Because she really likes you. And I was like, and she was like, and you have five acres. I don't understand why you don't foster. So I was like, eh, I'll take her home and see how she does with the other dogs. And if she does, I'll, you know, I'll foster her. And I asked Johan and he was like, you know, yeah, as long as it's just a foster, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so brought her home, got along with all the dogs. There was no issues. And the, and the first couple of days, she was just a sweet, quiet little puppy because, you know, didn't know where she was, didn't know what was going on. But by day three, she was just like, I feel good here. And then by day five, she was just all out crazy. <laughs> um, but she's still like, I, I tell people she's such a good puppy. And a friend of mine asked me, what does that mean? Because I don't think that there are bad puppies. And it's like, I don't mean good as in good and bad. I just mean good as in easy. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, we've had many puppies over the years. And Blue was a really good puppy. Um, Riley, who um, we actually only had her for a couple of weeks. She passed away from Parvo. She was a really good puppy. But you know, usually in my experience, you know, and also we had two sets of litter mates. So that's where I'm mostly deriving my history from. And when you have two sets of litter mates trying to juggle them, potty train them, keep them from chewing on things that they shouldn't be chewing on, 
um, having them listen to you when they're going crazy. It was, it was exhausting and (laughs) she's just not exhausting. And she got along with everyone. Apollo adores her and he tries to play with her, but he's three times her size. And it took her a couple weeks to get used to his playing style (laughs) so that she wasn't like scared because, you know, he comes running at her at full speed and she's just like, what's going to (laughs) happen? And now she's just like, she, she'll settle down to see what he's going to do. And then she runs around in circles and then comes back to him and she she plays a little bit with Zoe and um, she tries so hard to play with Rodrigo, but mostly <laughs> Rodrigo just tolerates them laying on the bed together. <laughs> but yeah, she got uh, an inquiry. Someone was going to put in an application to adopt her. We found out last Thursday, I think. And I let Johan know and, and he called me and, and, and I just said, you know, I'm disappointed because, you know, she's such a good puppy and you know, she is, she's good. She gets along with everyone. She's easy. She blends well. Um, you know, she adores Johan. It's like insane. I have so many pictures of her cuddling with him and laying on him. And, and I just took one a few minutes ago of her. She just comes jumping into the room. We went out for a potty break because we're still working on potty training. And she comes in and I don't know if you could see that, but she's oh, she's like sofa. behind his neck on the sofa. <laughs> yeah, so she just, I mean, she loves him, and I was just like, she's, it's just like a really good fit. And I was thinking, you know, I don't know how much longer I'm going to have Rodrigo, even though he's still doing really well, and you know, Zoe's a senior dog as well. And Apollo lost his playmate when Scout passed away in August, and I was like, here's an opportunity to get Apollo a playmate. But I was just like, but this is going to be our last puppy. It's like, I, I'm, I'm too old to, to, to do this, but she sleeps through the night, That's you know, good. those type of things where it's just easy. And I was just like, if we change our mind, like maybe in the next year, I don't feel that we'll luck out the way we are with this one, where she's such a great, perfect fit um, with everything, with our lifestyle, with our dogs, everything. And, and how old is she? She is almost five months old. Okay. But yeah. And so he was just sort of like, yeah, I actually expected that you were going to keep her. And I was just like, oh. And so um, so I I contacted the um, Jennifer, who's the head of our, one of the heads of our rescue and um, let her know that we were going to keep her and filled out the paperwork on Sunday. And yeah, she's ours. It's officially official now. She is, yeah. So Bella Esme Gautier is her name. I've never had a puppy puppy. Yeah. Nor do I want one. <laughs> it is a lot. I mean, and she's so easy because I don't, you know, I don't have to do the every two to three hours in the middle of the night to take her out. You know, she can hold it throughout the night. She's, we're working on crate training. So when I go into the office on Thursday, she has to go into the crate. So she knows that when she sees her little thing of peanut butter, that she goes right into the gr- crate so she can have the peanut butter. But yeah, she's a really good girl. She's eating small batch. And I had some farmer's dog in the freezer. So she enjoys that as well. And I'm sticking to that for now because she's so young. I don't want to put her on um, a DIY until she is uh, has stopped growing. And I don't know when that'll be because she's a whole bunch of breeds <laughs> and a whole bunch of big breeds. But yeah, she's a really sweet girl. Just very affectionate, very, um, very beautiful. She very is. Smart. Yeah, she's very smart. And yeah, she's she can be a little naughty at times. But even when she's naughty, it's hilarious because like <laughs> we'll take her out to use the bathroom. And she's like, I'm not using the bathroom. And she's just running around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just when I'm standing there in the cold going, why? But but she's 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 a really good girl. So we'll see. Did she come through like the shelter system at all or did she kind of go straight into rescue? Um, she, well, what usually happens is we will, and I'm not quite sure of her history and I should ask about it, but a lot of times we will pull mothers and their puppies out of high kill shelters in mm-hmm. Southern California and have them transported up here. Sometimes it's a matter of someone finding a litter or surrendering a litter of puppies that they can't take care of. Um, and that's how we get them. And so I don't, not, not sure which case she was. Um, I just knew that 
when I saw the the breed mix, I just laughed because it's like, oh yeah, that was a good idea. Hopefully it was accidental. It wasn't someone's idea of thinking, you know, I'm going to take this. It's a designer know, dog or whatever. Yeah. This husky German shepherd and mix it with this healer, you know, mutt and see what I get. Um, but yeah, her name was originally Mulan because it's uh, a royal litter and all the puppies were named after um, Disney princesses. Oh, okay. And so we changed it to, well, we changed, I changed it to Belle because I was like, Beauty and the Beast is my favorite princess <laughs> movie. But um, we just started calling her Bella. And then after that, you know, I was thinking from the movie, you know, Bella, Bella. And I was like, oh, Bella Esme. And so that's what someone asked me. It's like, is she named after Bella Swan? I'm like, yes, yes, she is. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> she is. I am that much of a nerd. I am not a Twilight fanatic. I just think it's funny. <laughs> So I guess I was curious, like, if you knew, like, her vaccine history or, you know, fully vaccinated. Kind of stuff. Yeah. So she's fully vaccinated. She's absolutely – everything's done. So she's not due for her – for vaccines until her one-year boosters. Um, and then um, I will keep her on the, you know, maybe three to five-year, probably more like five-year rabies type of a cycle – only because she, along with Apollo, will be traveling with me and not traveling out of state, but just going places with me. So we go to a friend's house who has a ton of dogs for them to play with. And it's just to be on the safe side because we live in a, such a rural area. I just want to make sure that they are protected. Zoe and Rodrigo are done with vaccines. In fact, they haven't been vaccinated in, gosh, eight years, maybe. So neither one, and well, yeah, Zoe hasn't been vaccinated in eight years. And I think, I don't know, Rodrigo, probably a little longer, but they're, they're done with vaccines with their age, but with Apollo and, and now, you know, Bella, I will keep up with the rabies partly for safety and partly because there is a growing number of veterinarians who are reporting people And they don't really care about the others, but they are reporting people on the rabies vaccine. I was curious if you were looking into any kind of like, you know, detox products or detox protocols, considering, you know, she had been through that or. I thought about it, but she had, she's already been vaccinated and I'm sort of looking at the detox being the fresh food that she's having right now. Gotcha. And um, I have started her on, like, she's on daily CBD oil along with the other dogs. There's a brand called Chubbs. It's um, a hemp CBD oil, as they probably all are. But it's a really good one. And I spoke to the owner. He has, he supports a bulldog rescue. And that's how he brought up his company. Um, He also has a line for humans, too, that is phenomenal. But Chubbs is, it's like in these brown bottles and it's really good. And I messaged him and asked him like, how much could she get at her size? And, and he came back, you know, and he's like, just give her a half of a dropper twice a day. And she, when I pull that dropper out, she comes and sits for her half a dropper. Um, <laughs> she loves it. And then she's getting the the new probiotic from Adored Beast, the wolf. Okay. Oh, everyone, nice. Yeah. Everyone is getting that. And I'm going to tell you that if if they had a BOGO sale today, I would buy it all because <laughs> it is phenomenal. Right? Or Apollo has had this skin rashy thing on his butt for months that I've been dealing with. Right, and, right. And it would go away, but then all of a sudden he'd be licking and it would come back and go away. And I'm treating it both with, you know, the Adored Beast products that I got in October really helped, you know, and that they just really – turned things around for him and got him on the healing side. But I'm treating it with um, apple cider. I have an apple cider vinegar, water, green tea spray that I was spraying on it to keep it from itching. And I'm putting salve on it, CBD salve on it, you know, to have for healing. And I haven't had to do any of that in probably, well, since we got the wolf. I mean, and when I say the difference in my dogs was immediate, it's no joke. Like wow. within a couple of days of adding it to their food, it, I saw such a huge difference. But yeah, Apollo, he hasn't, it's gone away. Just All right, I'm going to have to get this. Um, Zoe isn't chewing on her nails. 
Rodrigo isn't licking his paws. It's it's not a problem. So I've been adding it to her meals too, because when she joined us, she had, you know, I figured the the transition diarrhea, but we were having, I I was having problems keeping her solid. So I'm just like doing slippery elm and pureed sweet potato and pureed pumpkin and adding fiber to her meal. But I could not keep her solid without adding something. And now with the the wolf, all I do is once a day, I just sprinkle a little, just it's in a dropper, put it on their food. And yeah, she's been fine. Wow. I think she only gets a little soft if I change the food. So when I went from small batch to farmer's dog, there was a little bit of softness. And then when I went back to small batch, there was a little bit of softness, but otherwise she's doing good. So what about spay neuter? She is spayed. And so, yeah, so that comes with, you know, the risks that we're warned about, you know, and it's one of those where ideally, I I think that it's, it's funny, this was conversation came up somewhere on my Facebook and someone was said, you know, um, how hard is it for people to control their animals that, you know, this is ridiculous and vets just want to do these surgeries and get you in there as fast as possible for money. And I disagree hundred percent because for a lot of people, it's next to impossible for them to control their animal. And it's not that they couldn't do it. They're just not doing it. And we live, you know, in a, t- a area, or at least me, I, and I think everyone does. Everyone has areas near them where people are just kind of cavalier about their pets, you know, and we have that here too, where people, their pets are just outside wandering around. I mean, it's not as often as I see, you know, other people complaining about, but we do have, you know, a lot of irresponsible breeding happening where people are like, you know, you're, and it's not like trying to come up with a designer breed. It's just sort of like, I have a puppy and you have a puppy and, and they're so cute. Wouldn't they make good puppies? And that's kind of what we're seeing. And so, I mean, I even, we have signs up. Around and it's it's funny because probably six months ago I saw a sign on a telephone pole of German Shepherd Husky mixes mixed puppies and I was just like who would mix those two breeds together? Fast forward, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but yeah, we have things like that happening. So I hundred percent understand why people push for early spay and neuter. I mean, it's similar to veterinarians who don't support a raw diet. They just don't trust that people will do it correctly. And same thing with spay and neuter. They don't trust that people will, you know, be smart about their dogs. I mean, I've been to the dog park where someone has had a female dog that was in heat at the dog park. Oh my God. Reeking out because the dogs wouldn't leave her alone. And we're just like, why are you here? Oh my God. Why are you here? You know, I mean, and it's just sort of like, you would think that obviously, I mean, there was an episode of Sex in the City about this <laughs> I mean, in season six, if anyone needs to, to check Oh, out. that Charlotte had the little yeah. like Cavalier yeah. King Charles or something. Not sure if it was part one or part two of season six, but it was <laughs> season six where she had a little Cavalier King Charles, yes, um, Elizabeth that. Taylor, yes, that right. she took to the dog park and all the dogs had a go at her. And so, yeah. So (laughs) actually, yeah, I don't know, but it was season six, but you would think that this would be obvious to people, but it, you know, for some people it's not, they don't know. And it just never occurs to them or they get part of the story. Like someone might've told her, Hey, it's a huge dog. Cause I don't know if it was a great Dane, but it was a large giant breed dog. And so maybe someone told her, Hey, for this dog, you need to delay and but they didn't follow up with this is how you keep your dog from getting pregnant, and it just never occurred to her that she and to, could, yeah the people just uh, they don't know how dogs other dogs react to that it's, exactly. and and you and I sit here like oh my god but uh, you know there's such a sometimes a lack of knowledge yeah. amongst even people who you think are otherwise educated or you know what have you well it's like they you know it's you know speaking of that you know and to abruptly turn left. I think in the past couple of weeks, Rodney shared a study about adding 
what soaking kibble in liquid. Oh yeah. Yeah. We had talked about that that with Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, reading the stuff, you know, I blame you because, you know, far be it for me to take responsibility for anything going on in my life. I like to blame others, (laughs) (laughs) but because of you, I, I just like get off on reading the study because it's like, huh. So let me read the study. And I'm just sitting here like, there are so many holes in the study. It's not even funny. Yes. How did Rodney share this? What are you doing, Rodney? But it's like one of those where even Rodney Habib can get excited about a study and share it before he does his due diligence. Or was he just trying to make some point? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he was trying to stir up conversation. I'm not sure. But it was just sort of like, I, I just didn't agree with his take and, and that's okay. But, you know, even he can do that and we can disagree. So it's just like, if he, someone who we all know does his homework and gets so nerdy when it comes to science, if he can share something that is just like, "Mm, what? Then, you know, the average pet parent who isn't diving into this on a daily basis, the way we are, I mean, we have to really give them a little grace because, uh, they just, it just never occurs to them. They don't know until they know. Yeah. No one had sex with her dog though. She did leave. <laughs> At the dog <laughs> park. This one yeah, she, saw. Did leave. she did leave the dog <laughs> park. <laughs> that was so long ago too. I just, it's like, I, I haven't been to the dog park in years. I'm always surprised that it's still there because, you know, of course the world revolves around me. So if I don't go, then no one must go. But <laughs> it just, it cracks me up because again, that's another thing is my, you know, aside from my own bad experiences at the dog park, we're constantly being warned about how bad a place a dog park is and how uncontrolled it is. So it always surprises me that people still go to the dog park. I know. I feel the same way. And when I had, you know, having pit bull type dogs to me, like in my mind, it means like I have to have like an even higher threshold of responsibility and so I would never ever want to bring my dogs there because like if god forbid something happened you know it's always going to be the pit bull's fault oh yeah and I just a a normal reaction for a dog is going to be heightened in a pit bull so the fact that they're setting boundaries and saying hey no I don't want you sniffing my butt and things where uh, any other breed does that and people are like, oh, okay, there's, you know, I'll take my dog over here. But I think pit bull, um, Doberman Pinscher, uh, you know, a German Shepherd, or any type of, you know, a Dutch Shepherd, any type of big dog with teeth that are is known for, you know, protection or fighting, is going to be blamed if yeah. things go wrong. And so I just, it's just not a safe space. I mean. I, I have gone to sniff spots with my dogs because it's just me and my dogs. Right. And I would even, and I go to a friend's house who has a lot of dogs because I know her dogs and I trust her dogs. Well, I shouldn't say my dogs do well. Rodrigo is not dog friendly. He likes to sniff and everything, but he's just so unpredictable that I won't bring him around other dogs. Um, Zoe is not interested. She likes to look at them, but she doesn't want them coming near her. She's, she wants to lean in and sniff them. But she doesn't want, she wants, she doesn't want them to turn around and she won't reciprocate. So she's just sort of like, yeah, leave leave me alone. But Apollo is so very good with other dogs. So I like to take him around other dogs as much as possible because I think it does him some good. Penny and Nino are both uh, really good at meeting other dogs. Um, And Penny's like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And then she's done. Like, she's good. She doesn't need to play or interact. Uh, Nino is very sensitive to that dog's energy level. Mm -hmm. And if it's a very, like, hyper, like, dog that's, like, really high, like, this little, whether it's a little dog or a bigger dog, where you can almost see him, like, vibrating, like, you know, (laughs) Nino does not like that. And he will just, like, excuse himself and, (laughs) and he's done. Um, but if he likes their energy, he's really great at playing and, you know, he's really good at, at playing with, with other dogs and, and having a good time, but he's very sensitive to how, to that other dog's energy and whether he's yeah. going to interact with them or not. Yeah. And I, I always think Penny's kind of like me where we're kind of like, Hey, how you doing? Great to meet you. That's all I got. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's it's funny to me watching my dogs interact, especially because like Zoe, she's she's such a sweet girl, and but she's she likes her pack, and Sydney was the same way where she likes her pack, and I you know, I have an opportunity, you know, with every puppy, you have an opportunity to do things differently. So like I'm clipping her nails right now. Oh, good. So that she doesn't think it's a big deal. And, um, you know, I vacuum around her and, and do things around her. So she doesn't think it's a big deal. Um, car rides, car rides. Um, Johan did some work in this room. He put down new baseboard. It looks so good. It looks so good. And so he was in here sawing and doing the, the, what is it? The air nail gun? Oh yeah. It's like loud. (laughs) Like, uh, yeah. You can tell I am a total DIY person, (laughs) but yeah. And so loud and all that, you know, and I just didn't respond. Whereas, you know, in the past I would have been like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And, and I know there are people out there that say, no, it's okay to, to comfort your dog. And I just don't feel like I was comforting my dog. I was telling my dog, this is scary, but it's okay and without realizing it. So just doing things where just not responding, not reacting and, you know, but she's, and also just taking her places. So since she's fully vaccinated and I, you know, I waited until I got the okay from Jennifer, who is the, one of the executive directors. So she goes to, she can go to a couple of places where I feel comfortable that she'll be okay. And so she got to go hang out with her siblings on Sunday Aww. and, and a few of our friends who have dogs, we all get together at a brewery. She didn't want to go inside <laughs> and I'm using treats to like tell, to, to get her to go, but it was taking so long that I was just like, okay, I'm, you're still little. So I'm picking you up and you inside. <laughs> And then when we got inside and she's like, all these people are like, oh my gosh, you're just so cute. And and then she she saw her siblings and was super excited about that. And then there were other dogs and she was like, oh my gosh, who are you? And then she got a chew and she got to lay down and, and she was just like, this is an amazing place and didn't want to leave. <laughs> so I had to pick her up <laughs> to take her out. But I want her to be similar to Apollo where, you know, they have a healthy dose of fear in that they're not going to just take off, but they are friendly and socialized and, and do very well. And Apollo is like that. Oh, what about like baths and water? Not yet. And because I only bathe my dogs when they need a bath or, you know, a few times a year. So we haven't done that yet. Since it's so cold, I probably won't give her a bath, but hopefully it won't freak her out. Apollo is not a fan. He loves going swimming, but not a fan of the bath. Uh, You know, uh, Scout was the exact same way. Loved to go swimming, hated having a bath. And so, um, so no bath yet, but if she gets into something, we'll see. With our old gals, we could pick them up and put them in the bathtub and they didn't like love it, but it was, you know, no huge ordeal. Yeah. Penny and Nino like both freak the hell out with the bathtub. And so we got like an outdoor tub to bathe them, like a big black tub from like tractor supply or something. And Penny will like deal with it. And, but man, does she, does she make you aware that she's, you know, miserable? <laughs> And Nino is like such a handful. And the hilarious thing about Nino is, you know, after Tim will, you know, empty out the tub and we'll kind of have it like leaning up against the the patio railing to, you know, dry out and stuff. And Nino will attack the tub. (laughs) And so there's like all these chunks missing out of like the side of the tub because he's like, that that terrible thing. (laughs) That is awesome. <laughs> it's just always is funny to me how they like, you know, make those associations. So maybe just put her in the bathtub, even yeah, if probably, you don't. Uh, yeah, probably a good idea. You to do a whole bath. Her. Yeah, probably a good idea to just get her used to it. Because we have a walk-in shower on our main level. And so that's where I bathe the dogs. And so it's probably a good idea for me to just even just go in there, run the water a little bit and then come out, give her some treats. Yeah. So that she knows that it's a good place and and let it go. But, I'm just I'm trying to think of what are like the big ordeals with us, like the nail trims, Nino hates the car, doing the baths, like <laughs> going to the vet. So um she doesn't need to go to a vet anytime soon, but and my friend is a vet tech, so I usually just ask her, 
you know. Mm, so do like a meet and greet, like yeah, come here but, and get a treat. And but it's probably a good idea to, to yeah, to drop in to the vet. It helped with Rodrigo or was it Rodrigo? No. Who was afraid of the vet? I think it was Scout and Zoe when they used to be afraid of the vet. Then I would just drop into the vet, get a treat and yeah. go home um, once a week. And they were able to start warming up to the vet after I started doing that. But yeah, but it's been it's been fun. It's you know, it's it's been surprisingly fun. The first few days were a little it took a while to get used to we had to make an adjustment and remember yeah. like after playtime, it's time to go outside. <laughs> after she eats, let's go outside. If she wakes from a nap, let's go outside and and get um get on that schedule. Yeah. So she's finally got to a point where she'll go to the door. She knows where she has to go to go outside. We just have to be watching. Yeah. Um, and so, and luckily she has these huge paws that make a ton of noise <laughs> when she walks. I mean, and so when we hear those paws just going, 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 one of us gets up, grabs a coat and we go outside with a flashlight <laughs> um, and we go, sometimes she'll potty and sometimes she just runs around barking at the sky. <laughs> Well, what a lucky little girl she is, and I can't wait to, you know, watch her grow and hear all about her. And yeah, I'm curious to know how big she'll be. Yeah, everyone keeps saying that she's super big, but she's not. To me, she's not super big. <laughs> um, she's almost five months. She's 28 pounds, but you know, having a 78 pound dog, it's just hard to see her as wow. She's really big, right? Right. So if anyone is listening and they live in the Pacific Northwest, she does have siblings that are still available for adoption. And the beautiful thing is that all of them have this this temperament where Aww. it's just a really sweet, affectionate, very smart, very easy to train temperament. And, you know, a lot of people are very intimidated by the breed mix, but there's something in there that is calming everything else down. And we've been lucky because like we have a border collie blue healer mix. He's very mellow. Wasn't always, but he was never um he was never high energy like a purebred border collie or pure healer. Um Zoe is border collie healer, Australian Shepherd. Um actually Rodrigo and she are both of those. And both are just mellow dogs. And then Apollo is a husky golden retriever, but that golden retriever and husky mix. I do not recommend it, <laughs> but it works for him. I don't I don't know if it works for all dogs, but it works for him. So he's he's a lot easier to for me uh cuz I know that I could not do a purebred husky. <laughs> I uh I went to get my oil changed this morning and it's a kind of like a family-owned uh business and the wife works in the office and so I got there she must come in at like 8.30 and I had gotten there at like 8.15 and uh, she comes in with a five-month-old miniature Australian shepherd puppy. And, and she went in and she's like, well, I'll close my office door. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> and now that is not a dog I would ever one in my home but you know to keep me company for 15 minutes waiting for my oil change it was a great morning <laughs> yeah, that was nice I mean I've been like when people come by the house like delivery drivers and stuff if they have time like there's one I see a lot and every now and then I'll, I'll be like you got two minutes and she's like yes bring her on out and so I'm trying to just expose her not so much to people, but to things like the delivery truck and truck, the noise yeah. that it makes, and um, so that she doesn't get scared. And so she's so she's associating these things to this great lady who is like t gave her pets and cuddles and stuff like that. So now, you know, she she's not as afraid. Or I don't know if you guys have uh, like the trash trucks because. Mm -hmm. uh, Nino gets very freaked out if we're out walking when the trash trucks come around and he thinks they're like stalking him and he's like looking over his shoulder like, what are those people doing? I just think it's funny when dogs do that. It's so funny. Because we don't have a neighborhood. I actually have to drive to a neighborhood if I were to walk them around a neighborhood. We just usually stick around the property. We don't trust her enough to be out on the property too often on her I'm not, she's never on her own, but I usually take the dogs out and they understand the borders and 
won't leave. And it's not that she'll leave, but um, Johan was like, those little legs can run really fast. (laughs) So it's like, we keep her on a leash uh, if we go out there or I'll go out there with the other dogs for like 10 minutes. And she usually sticks around the other dogs and just sniffs around. And then we go back inside, like on when it was snowing, because we did get a dusting of snow a couple of inches. And so she enjoyed that. Oh, do you guys have a long line? Uh, Yeah, we have a 50 foot one. And I hate it. I hate it. (laughs) I always think that they're an underutilized uh, tool because I, I wish people wouldn't just let their dogs off leash. But, you know, you can... Put them on a long line. Yeah. I want to get something that's maybe 10, 10 to 15 feet because I think that that would be easier to do. There was once where I actually just connected two leashes together with her mm-hmm. and then took her for a walk. And that way I was able to let her go out a little further. I don't like the, um, you know, the the flexi leashes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I would never I'm, use one of those. I, I'm yeah. terrified that I'm going to I, I've seen the injuries you can yeah. get with your calves and things like that, not to mention for the dog. So I, I leave those alone, but I'm I'm looking for a really nice, easy, um, and I want something, it's not something that I've ever tried before, but I want something that maybe I can attach to myself mm. because she's so small, she can't pull me anywhere. But it would just, it took her a while to get used to walking on a leash because it would get, she get tangled and it's like, what's this thing around me? So it was on her collar. So I went and got her a couple of harnesses and she seems to do better on a harness, but she's still really little. So her harnesses are just a little bit too big. Mm -hmm. And so I'm waiting for her to grow into them a little more. But we went on our first pack walk a few days ago and she went with Zoe and Apollo and she did really well on the pack walk. And she, I think she had a lot of fun, just like, what are, what is, what are we doing? She was just like having the blast. <laughs> and so that was, that was sweet to see. So I want to take her on more of those. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm having old dog problems. <laughs> How's Penny doing? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, she, she has the a recurrent UTI. We actually just sent another urine sample out. Uh, well, I saw the vet on Sunday, and so we should get the results of that back by the end of this week. Uh, my vet was actually out of town for a little while, so it took us a while to get back in to see her to get like this rechecked situation. And so I guess we're kind of trying to figure out next steps and and kind of what could be this underlying cause. Is it an immune system dysfunction? Is it a kidney issue? Would she have bladder stones? Um, You know, there's a couple other uh, Cushing's disease. Early Mm -hmm. onset Cushing's disease uh, could even be something. So I guess we're kind of trying to decide, like, diagnostically, should we be doing something next? And uh, it's just been upsetting. And I really don't want to have to put her on antibiotics yet again. I still haven't even finished the animal biome course with her. And so... Uh, we're we're kind of trying to figure all those things out. And my vet's reaching out to some of the other people she works with to, or, you know, that she consults with to kind of get some other input. Uh, just because, again, with Penny having had a bad history with antibiotics, we really don't want to do that. But we also, yeah. you know, don't want this to spread and get into our kidneys or, you know, do other things too. So yeah. it's just been a bummer because we're doing all these other, you know, we're doing the cranberry, we're doing some other herbal support where you changed the Chinese herbal formula that she's on. You, uh, I've been putting her on, um, a pork protein instead of the fish, which is like too cooling for the, you know, winter time. And so, you know, I feel like we're making all these other little changes and it it still didn't really, um, help. And, you know, so she's had a few accidents in the house. Um, You know, what's really interesting is like, she'll be fine all day while we're at work. We'll come home, no accidents, and we'll let her out. Tim will let her out. And then like, she'll have another accident like half an hour after she was just out. And, you know, it's like, or it's like on the weekends when, you know, they're in and out much more often, but yet she'll go all day while we're at work. She'll be overnight, you know, with me, you know, sleep in bed all night and be fine. But I don't know. It's just been very strange and yeah, uh, just trying to you know, get kind of to the root cause of, of what would 
you know, be, be causing all of this. And, and I appreciate that our vet is looking at it in that yeah. lens. Yeah. I, and that's really good. Yeah. Rodrigo is, he's, I mean, he's doing really well, you know, um, but it is one of those things where it's different, you know, something that probably is commonplace when they're younger and easy to, to cure and deal with when they're older, you have to expand what's going on. And it's just, it's, it's mind numbing because there's so much information out there. And cause she just has like some of these other like strange little quirks going on too. And uh, like with the Cushing's, you know, Penny's always had a couple areas of fur where um, like when, when we first, when I first found her, like she was missing like a lot of fur and her fur was very sparse and some of it like has never quite grown back. Mm-hmm. And then some areas like it'll kind of grow back and then it'll get like more sparse again and so she's looking like a little sparse in certain areas and so that could be something like with the Cushing's you know and she's not in a full-blown horrible state of it but like we might be catching like the very beginning of it or something and um so I guess there's like a test that you can do for that that's diagnostic but it's not something my vet is able to do it's something we'd have to go to like a full vet hospital for because oh, okay. she works out of her home yeah. and it would take like it monitors her like over several hours uh mm-hmm. the cortisol levels and stuff so you know that's something we'd be looking at doing um an ultrasound of you know to see if she has bladder stones is something mm-hmm. you know we're talking about and of course like all of this is going on in the middle of the holidays and uh like my my veterinarian, her daughter dances like point ballet, and she's like has all these Nutcracker performances. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to fit all this in around like the Nutcracker schedule, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so much. So my veterinarian is actually talking about coming to Albany uh, with that me next year because they actually had a lineup change. I didn't know if you saw this, but Dr. Connor Brady is not coming now and they're pushing him to the following year. It sounded Mm -hmm. like, but she's having Dr. Steve Marsden and his wife come. And so my veterinarian is like obsessed with Dr. Steve Marsden. He's been like a mentor of hers with Chinese medicine. And so she was very excited, I think, to like have any excuse to kind of see him and, 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 you know, hear him speak and, and she was very excited about that so i'm excited too because she's spoken so highly of him yeah i'm i'm like really i'm i'm mostly excited to well when i saw that steve marsden had been had been added i that was just like okay yeah definitely but they had me at barbara royal oh, yeah. and steve oh, yeah. brown because of the animal diet formulator and i just love you know, Dr. Barbara Royal. And it's just, she's such a, a genuine, nice, cool person. And, uh, and I just got a, a warning that it's a quarter to six, <laughs> a very loud whisper. <laughs> we have, we have to go pick up dog food, but, uh, but yeah, she's, you know, I love, uh, I love the fact that she delivers information in a very relaxed way. I think she and Dr. Karen Becker, are the same. They're not these crazy, fanatic, crazy, you know, like kind of cringe, uncomfortable type of people where you're kind of scared of them. (laughs) They're just very like, like, yeah, of course this makes sense. And, and she, I just love the way she delivers information. And and I've never, I've only seen Steve Brown speak like online, like at events Mm -hmm. that people were recording. There was actually one event where someone wasn't supposed to be recording it, but they were, and we were all online watching it. But I have I just want to listen to them. And I think this year I'm coming with questions. I'm like, I'm not going, I'm just going to have a list of questions that are in my lap ready because this is, you know, just like last year, you know, this is going to be a really great lineup of people to learn from. And I also uh, saw that Dr. Kozier on her Facebook page, she's doing kind of like a speaker series yeah. leading up to the Albany event. So I'll yeah. make sure we have a link in the show notes for that Absolutely. too. So, well, I have to go pick up dog food. <laughs> <laughs> Big wishes, you know, or well wishes to Penny. I hope you guys get some resolution really quickly. I'm looking forward to finding out what what could be going on because I had no idea that recurring uh urinary tract infections could be a sign of Cushing's. But, you know, of course, if it's coming back again and again, it has to be a sign of something. And, and it's, it's, 
it's on one hand fascinating, but on another hand, it's just like, ugh, unraveling this has got to be so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. My girl. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. And I will let you go. And uh, I think the next time we talk, it'll be after Christmas. Yeah. So Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. All the holidays are coming up. <laughs> Yay. Until next time. See you guys later. Bye.